Just like her music video, Mexican pop star Sofia Reyes is bold, bright, and breaking through. I have faith that I'm gonna be a huge star and that the whole world is gonna know who I am. Not only is Sofia one of the biggest names in Latin music, she's also a proud Latina woman, cementing her name in an industry dominated by men. Mujeres estamos como que... Partiéndola y rompiéndola. At just 23 years old, Sofia has nearly 9 million monthly Spotify listeners, a Best New Artist Latin Grammy nomination, and over 300 million views on her latest music video. A topic that got Sofia choked up when I stopped by her Los Angeles home for our sit down interview. Why am I so sentimental? This is my life as a Latina. We're here in your home. Mm -hmm. We want to get to know the real Sofia. I love it. I want to start at the beginning. Yeah. You're a little girl growing up in Monterrey, Mexico. Yes. What was your first memory of, I think I want to be a singer? I was the kind of girl that, you know, if my mom wanted to go shopping or whatever, I would be like dancing and wearing all the clothes in front of the mirror and like, Having I was always party. very dramatic. <laughs> yeah, and like intense and I love performing and I believed that I was a star when I was little. I mean, I was always surrounded by music. Playing piano for me is like a, it gives me freedom. It's like my moment and it, it makes me feel powerful because when I work so hard on a song and then when I actually know how to play it, it feels so good that you're not even thinking and your fingers are moving and you're mu making music. I don't know, it, it's really, it's beautiful. I took singing classes, acting classes, modeling classes, and I loved all that. Anything that had to do with art, I loved. It sounds like your parents were very supportive were of very you being supportive. in the arts. I owe everything to my parents because they pushed me to, you know, pursue my dreams. Would you be where you are today without them? No, I don't think so. We have a, a little surprise for you. Ah! What is it? There's, some, so there's someone who's very proud of you. I know. Oh, that's you, true. That, what? Hello, Sophia. I know, I'm gonna cry. We are so proud of you, not just because you're a big star, but you're a great human being. We love you. I was not expecting this. Aww. I know, now I'm, I'm tearing up. Tear, like, <laughs> yeah, that's what so is, cute. What's going I love that he's speaking English. What's going through your mind? Um, I love my dad, and I'm also like really sentimental, um, and I miss them obviously. So when it comes to my family, I always get really like sentimental. They've been really good parents, so I feel like I want to make them proud. I think you you're know? doing a great so, job. So that's good. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you. So I was 15 when I moved to Guadalajara. I was in this girl group. I mean, they all became like friends and actually like sisters, family. Um, but it was a, it was definitely an experience. I. Didn't like the team at all. So the management was was not yeah, treating you the way that you wanted to I be treated. I don't think so. All of us. The music I was doing was not my style. They would make us compete with ourselves, and at the end of the day, like fight with each other. And you know, it was it was it was not a good environment. I was feeling kind of like I'm not gonna say depressed, but I was kind of like I didn't like what I was going through. I felt really lonely. I didn't like what I was doing, and it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to do this thing, you know? I just I just don't wanna do this, I don't like it. And then I go back to Monterrey, and, and during the girl band thing, I meet Charlie and Paloma. They're uh, the best couple ever, and they're my managers. They wanted to move to LA, do music and everything, and, and my family and I felt like that was the best opportunity, you know? Like, that we had to take that chance and just go to LA. Charlie and Paloma tell me that when they met me, they. Like, I was a complete different person. My world was upside down. You were discouraged. They didn't want to know anything about music, whatever. Um, and it took me like a year to like, renacer. Everything is faith. Like, I, I have faith that I'm gonna be a huge star and that the whole world is gonna know who I am and that I'm gonna touch people with my music, whatever, that, but that's faith. You don't know, uh -oh. you don't know. A lot of your success in the early days yeah. came from YouTube. Yeah. What made you open your laptop one day and say, you know what, I think I'm gonna sing covers. We're gonna start from scratch in LA 
do covers in English, do covers in Spanish. And I knew how YouTube was getting very like famous and how people were getting, you know, known by their music or by their talent, you know, through YouTube. We opened a Twitter, we opened an Instagram, a Facebook account, like we planned everything. Little by little, people got to know me more and more. One of the covers that got really popular was this song by Rayleigh, eh, Que Nos Paso. You're yeah. posting YouTube covers. And like a year and after. And about a wanted. year later, yeah. you capture the attention of a superstar like Prince Royce. I met Prince Royce at an award show. He really liked my covers. And that's basically how it started. And we got into the studio, wrote a couple songs. We partnered up with Warner Latin. Everything happened really fast. I wrote a song called Solo Yo, and I knew that that was a song I wanted to do with Royce. Working with him, what does he mean to you and how has he really elevated your career as a singer? He taught me so much. He, having like, Writing sessions with him taught me to be a better songwriter. He's an amazing performer, so... You've studied him. For sure, for sure. What's the best piece of advice he's given you? Having fun is the key. If you have fun, everyone's gonna have fun. We got really involved, that was like four years ago, to the project, and yeah. And here we are. are. And here we are. So put your hands on my hands, The album was a huge success. Thanks. So much so that you got nominated for Best New Artist at the yeah. 2017 Latin Grammys. Yeah. Was that unbelievable? <sighs> My boyfriend, he's also a singer, and he was nominated as well. You were against uh, each other. How exactly. was that? <laughs> the, it, the whole thing was really funny. He calls me, right? He calls me. It was like 7 a.m. here. And he felt so, he was so nervous. He's, he's like, I'm nominated but maybe my girlfriend isn't, and I don't know how to feel about it, Yeah, you know? And I was the last one mentioned, like, Sofia Reyes, and he was so excited. Su novio. Sí. Ricky sí. Montaner. Sí, sí, sí. It feels like you guys are madly in love and you're yeah. so supportive of one another. Yeah. What has his support meant to you through this crazy journey of music? Oh wow, everything. I mean, that's why I fell in love with him. This life is not an easy one. I feel like, you know, I have to travel a lot and then come back and then maybe I'm here for one day and then and he does the same, so we understand each other and I don't know if anyone could like Soportarlo. What are the qualities about him that you love the most? He's really funny. He is a gentleman. He is like, he respects me and he admires me and he's super talented. Um, and he's a good person, like he means well. So for me, that's like, everything is perfect. Is marriage a goal for you down the line? It's always been. And Ricky and I are taking it very chill. There's no rush, but like we're just enjoying the process and we're really happy. He's the one for you. Yeah, for sure. You think so? Yeah. He sounds like a really special guy. Yeah, he is. I take it back. I know he's a special guy because yeah. he wanted to send you a little message. Hey baby, uh, Ricky here from Guadalajara, Mexico. I love you. I am so proud of you. Everything you've accomplished, everywhere where this song has taken you, uh, I'm so proud, couldn't be prouder. I am so excited for what's next. Um, I always uh, look forward to everything you're gonna do artistically and as a person, I love you, I'm so proud of you and I can't wait to see you the day after tomorrow. Yeah. I love you. And he it's blew so you cute. a kiss. What makes you emotional? I mean, he's so sweet and he's the best and I was not, you know, expecting this so. Definitely a surprise, but he's always like that. What's the most romantic thing he's done for you? I was flying from Argentina, I guess, and then I'm, I was going all the way to LA, and I there's no direct flight, so I stopped in, in Miami, and I was just gonna be there in Miami for like five minutes, because I had to run to my next gate, and he bought a ticket, he was waiting for me in the plane, in Miami, like coming out of the plane, I saw him for five minutes, we walked together to the gate, and then I left to the next place.
I feel really proud of myself. I feel really proud of my team because we've worked so hard for so long. It feels good to see what's going on with Un Dos Tres. This has definitely been like a new experience for me. I've never, you know, lived what I'm living right now and I've, I'm enjoying every second of it. My three biggest career goals are touring all around the world, uh, selling out stadiums, and collaborating with, with Ed Sheeran. Hey Ed Sheeran, we could do something really cool. How do you feel being one of very few yeah. powerful young women in music right now? Bueno, creo que mucho, mucho talento femenino latino en el mundo, pero hace falta apoyarlo más. Rosalía, Becky G, Carol G, Nati Natasha, eh, yo, Lizzie Grace, <laughs> Lali, Anita, o sea, hay muchísimas y me da mucho gusto que, que todo eso esté cambiando. Yo he sentido un golpe muy fuerte de cómo ahorita las mujeres estamos como que partiéndola y rompiéndola. Iba a award shows y todos eran hombres y una mujer era la que cantaba y cosas así que eran como que, pero ¿por qué? O sea, ¿dónde están todas las demás mujeres? Creo que eso es lo que nos hacía falta, especialmente en la música latina, en la industria de la música latina, porque yo de repente, o sea, tú ves una Beyoncé, ves una Rihanna, ves una Taylor Swift, una Selena Gomez, una Ariana Grande, you see all this powerful woman and you're like, in the Latin industry, why don't we have that. Would you say there's a sisterhood amongst you, amongst you and Leslie and Becky G yeah, and Carol G? For sure. You're all fighting together yeah. to make women more elevated, more prominent. Totally. And I love it. And I love that we're all friends, that we all support each other. I don't feel like competition at all. It's never like, uh, it's always like, hey, I, I'm, I'm here to support you. I'm here to alzarte. O sea, y creo que eso es algo muy cool, que creo que todas somos como team players mm -hmm. y, y nos ayudamos y nos apoyamos y es algo padrísimo. Pero, pero es que tú lo ves eh, eh, con los hombres, o sea, como de repente un Maluma, un Piso 21, un J Balvin, un Nicky Jam, un Daddy Yankee, un Osuna, qué sé yo. Todo el mundo se junta y hace como que remixes y hacen tal canción y entonces son amigos y hacen ahora esto. Y con las mujeres eso no es tan común, entonces sentimos que, que hace más falta ese, ese empuje. Y bueno... También de, de, con todo esto es que, que decido que mi siguiente sencillo sea con mujeres porque creo que ya era momento desde hace un buen rato eh, y creo que no es nada importante que estemos ahí para apoyarnos. As an artist, yeah. how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as someone that, you know, changed the world in a positive way that, you know, inspired people to follow their dreams and also to inspire people to do good, to love others. I hope my music, like, Once I'm not here in the world anymore, I feel like I, I want my music to keep like, you know. Transcending. Yeah, and being played and I want people to still enjoy my, my music. <laughs>